In this video, I will be making 2,2 bipyridine, which is a chelating ligand that is able to complex with many transition metals and is therefore used in catalysis. One of the more interesting complexes is the ruthenium complex, which finds use in optical applications like sensors and OLEDs. It exhibits strong fluorescence and emits a red-orange light when irradiated by UV light. Since I can use the bipyridine for another project, I will be making it myself. And I also want to see what the ruthenium complex looks like IRL. So let's get to making it. First, I will prepare the catalyst for this reaction, rainy nickel. So I set up an empty dish and add in a flask with a stir bar. I added in 300 ml of water and then add in 80 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now I start stirring and wait for it all to dissolve. I then slowly start adding in 62.5 grams of a powdered 50-50 nickel aluminum alloy. I add it in at such a rate that the mixture doesn't foam over. In this reaction the aluminum is getting consumed by the sodium hydroxide to form sodium aluminate and hydrogen gas. The nickel will be left behind as a fine powder with a high surface area, which can be used as a catalyst for various different types of reactions. When all of the alloy has been added and the reaction has tamed down, I fill the dish with boiling hot water and leave it to stir for a day. When that is done, I stop stirring and use some distilled water to remove any nickel that is sticking to the sides of the flask. Now to remove all of the sodium aluminate and sodium hydroxide, I wash the catalyst 10 times through decantation with 10 portions of 150 ml of distilled water. When that is done, I am left with a black slurry of nickel powder. Now with the help of some distilled water, I transfer all of the catalyst to another flask. I decant all the excess water and then add a fresh layer of water to cover all of the nickel. Now I have activated rainy nickel, but during this activation procedure, the nickel has absorbed hydrogen gas onto its surface. But the reaction I will be doing will not work if hydrogen is already absorbed onto the rainy nickel, so I will have to remove it. I set up a water bath and then attach a dropping funnel and two gas adapters to the flask. To accommodate any sudden eruption of gas, to the middle adapter a 500ml flask is connected. To the right adapter, a 1 liter flask is attached that is connected to a vacuum pump and a vacuum gauge. I pull a vacuum on the setup and then start heating the water bath to boil the water inside of the flask. This will pull out all of the hydrogen that is attached to the nickel powder. We can see the nickel powder is releasing hydrogen and the water starts to boil. After a while, the danger of it suddenly releasing a lot of hydrogen has pretty much gone away. So I remove the gas adapter on the right and replace it with a short path vacuum distillation setup to more easily boil off all of the water. In the meantime, I will test the pyridine that I have for the presence of pyrrol. If pyrrol is present in the pyridine, it can drastically reduce the yield. If it is present, then the pyridine should be distilled from KOH to purify it. So to test for the presence of pyrrol, I prepared a 5% solution of para-dimethylaminobenzaldehyde in 3.7% HCl. Now I take a vial and add about 0.5 milliliters of pyridine and 2.5 mL of water. I then add 2 mL of 37% HCl and 0.5 mL of the para-dimethylaminobenzaldehyde solution. If pyrrol is present in the pyridine, then a red-purple color should appear. Nothing appears from my pyridine sample, so it is likely free of pyrrol. When pretty much all of the water is gone, I attach an argo balloon to the middle adapter so that the nickel does not come in contact with the air. I then remove the distillation setup and replace the dropping funnel for a smaller one. Now I add 50 ml of pyridine into the dropping funnel and slowly drip it into the flask. I then remove the heating mantle and start shaking the flask so that the pyridine starts covering all of the nickel. Afterward, I again add 50 ml of pyridine into the dropping funnel and add that to the flask as well. I shake it strongly to remove as much of the nickel from the sides of the flask and afterward remove all of the adapters and we can finally see into the flask again. Now that the pyridine is fully covering the nickel, it can be let into the air safely. So I remove the middle stopper and replace it with a condenser. I then heat the pyridine to a boil. I leave the mixture to reflux for 48 hours. During this reaction, the rainy nickel will steal one hydrogen from each pyridine molecule which will lead to the pyridines forming a bond between them. And so we end up with bipyridine. When it is done, the pyridine has discolored and we should have formed some bipyridine. I take it off heat and wait for it to cool down to 60 C. When that temperature is reached, I filter it through a glass fitted filter with vacuum filtration to filter out the nickel. Now since the pyridine and by extension the bipyridine soaks into the catalyst, we have to extract it so that we can get out as much product as possible. To do that, 
I add more pyridine to the flask and then boil it for 10 minutes. After that, I filter the mixture again and repeat the pyridine extraction two more times. We can see that the filter is still quite cloudy, probably because some small nickel particles managed to go through the filter. Since the nickel is very sticky, I will just filter it through some cotton to get it out. So it worked well and I am now left with a clear red liquid. Now to remove all of the excess pyridine and other contaminants, I will distill it over with a short path vacuum distillation. After a while, all of the pyridine has boiled off and I am left with a brown liquid. This mixture contains a nickel complex of bipyridine, so to remove most of it, I add 100 ml of hexanes, in which it is less soluble. I filter it through a glass fitted filter and wash it with a small bit of hexanes. Now I am left with a yellow orange solution, in which some solid is starting to crystallize out. To remove the hexanes, I will simply distill it off with a regular short path distillation. When all of the hexanes is gone, a red liquid remains, which crystallizes fully upon cooling down. To purify this mixture, I will do column chromatography. So I will dissolve the product in about 30 ml of 10% ethyl acetate in hexanes. Then I start preparing the column. So I add in about 250 grams of silica gel to a beaker and mix it with 10% ethyl acetate in hexanes. I add enough so that it becomes a slurry and then add it all into the column. I added a layer of sand on top, but it fell a little too hard. So part of it buried itself into the silica, but it likely won't really matter for this separation. Also, while I was swirling around the flask that contained the product solution, it randomly decided to break, so I lost half of my product. Anyhow, now I add all of the product solution on top and let it soak into the silica. I then add more of the aluminum on top and start running the column. I collect many large fractions and after some hours all of it has come through. I combined all of the fractions containing the bipyridine, which is about 1.4 liters of solvent, and then distilled it all over. When all of the solvent is gone, I am left with a clear yellow liquid. I put it all into a crystallizing dish and then set it in the freezer to crystallize out all the bipyridine. I then filter all of the crystals out with gravity filtration and put it into another dish. Now on the left I have the relatively pure crystallized bipyridine and on the right some impure yellow bipyridine. So I discarded the yellow bipyridine and put the white one into a vial and the yield turned out to be 3 grams. Now to make the ruthenium complex of bipyridine I set up a heating block with a flask and a stir bar. I add in 0.46 grams of dry ruthenium 3 chloride. Then I add 1 gram of bipyridine crystals. I then dissolve it in 50 ml of water. Now I will prepare a solution of sodium phosphonate, which will reduce the ruthenium 3 plus ions to 2 plus and allow it to form the 2 plus complex with the bipyridine. So here I have a bottle of phosphenic acid. First I take about 2 milliliters of the phosphenic acid and add it to a vial. I dilute it slightly with some water and then start adding sodium hydroxide pellets until a white precipitate appears. After a while we can see the precipitate and now I will continue adding phosphenic acid until the precipitate disappears. When pretty much all of it is gone, I add the solution to the flask. I then fit a condenser on top and reflux the mixture for 30 minutes. When that is done, we can clearly see the mixture has turned to an orange red color. Now to remove any undissolved material, I filter it through a glass fitted filter, but it seems that pretty much nothing was left behind. Now I take the filter, add in a stir bar, and then 13 grams of potassium chloride. I heat the mixture to a boil and we can see the color is changing slowly to dark red. I remove the flask off heat and then pour all of it into a crystallizing dish. Now I allow it to cool down to room temperature and then pour it all onto a glass fitted filter. I scrape the residue off the filter but it's still a thick red paste. I crystallize out more of the complex by boiling off some water from the filter. I filter this again and collected the residue, and then dried it all together in an oven at 120 C. After the paste had dried, I crushed it and it became a strong red orange powder. The yield turned out to be 1 gram. Now since the ruthenium complex of bipyridine is known for its optical properties, we can test it. So I set up a UV flashlight and put a beaker filled with water on top. Now I add a small bit of the ruthenium complex to the water, and we can immediately see it emits a bright orange light, due to its fluorescent properties. The complex dissolves in water, so let's try another solvent like hexanes, in which it does not dissolve.
so basically it just sinks to the bottom. Now let's try DCM. With that, I would like to thank you for watching, and as always, a special thanks to all my patrons. See ya!